this morning. <clears throat> However, I'm not going to choose one to be the topic of what I preach from, but I, I'm going to lay a foundation and then we'll look at three separate passages of scriptures. Moms, I want to preach to you this morning. It's not, uh, it's not excluding anybody else. Uh, I believe there's things that we can all gain, but we celebrate you today and I want to share from the Word of God to you. Uh, it was in an elementary school class that uh, a teacher was uh, busy uh, with her students and they were studying magnets. And uh, as they were uh, talking about how that they attract metal objects and, and picks them up, uh, she was deciding to test her students' knowledge on what the magnet was and, and, and to find out what they learned. And so she said to them, she said, I have six letters starting with an M and I pick up things. Who am I? Over the half the class wrote, Mother. <laughs> Thank God for mothers. I want to read this to you. I appreciate it, maybe because of the journey of life that we're in. Some of you can reflect back on it and you can laugh and chuckle. And uh, some of you can agonize as you are there with. But uh, here is a woman who wrote about her active to toddler, and she was writing about the instructions on how to bake a cake. Listen, preheat the oven, but first check the oven for rubber balls and Batman figurines. <laughs> Clear the counters of Legos and Hot Wheels. Grease the pan, crack the nuts, measure the flour, remove Johnny's hand from the flour, uh, and then remeasure the flour. Crack the nuts to replace the nuts that Johnny has eaten. Sip the flour, bake the, the uh, baking powder and salt. Uh, get broom and dustpan, sweep up the pieces of the bowl Johnny knocked on the floor. Find a second bowl and then answer the doorbell. Return to the kitchen, walk, remove Johnny's hand from the bowl, wash Johnny's uh, hand, answer the phone, return, uh, 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 re return and, and remove half an inch of salt from the grease pan. Call oh, Johnny, look for Johnny, give up looking for Johnny. Answer the phone, return to the kitchen, find Johnny, remove Johnny's hand from the bowl, remove a layer of nut shells from the grease pan, wash the kitchen floor and camera and walls, call the bakery, place an order, take two time out, and lie in. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm appreciative. I, 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 I love the life experience that I'm learning and seeing. My wife is a great, great, and awesome mom. I'm not sure how she does everything. And I'm always appreciative when I come home to a, a cooked meal, Sister Jan. Amen. I, I'm always appreciative. Uh, and, and in the original context, the Word of God, the word, the Hebrew word for mother, in our language would transfer A-M-E. But it literally means this. It means the bond of the family. I believe that probably all of us can look and say that mothers are the bond of the family. It's the glue that keeps everything sticking together. And thank God today for moms. It was during uh, President George Bush Jr.'s uh, uh, presidency that he had an advisor that, that he brought in from Austin, Texas. Moved to Washington, D.C. It was one of his advisors that he had chosen. Uh, thought a great deal of this lady. And she had to approach President Bush one day and she said to him, she said, President Bush, she said, I, I need to give you some news that you may or may not like. Uh, but, but, but I need to tell you that my husband is unhappy in Washington, D.C. And my son is unhappy in Washington, D.C. Therefore, I am unhappy in living in Washington, D.C. So we will be moving back to Austin, Texas. She said this. She said, for me, motherhood is a complete reordering of life. Can I stop? Motherhood is a complete reordering of the life. I noticed a few things uh, because I can look at my mom's life, but I was there, but I didn't notice it as much. But I look at it in my wife's life, and it's a reorganizing. Brother Tim, 
If our girls don't get enough sleep, we have one that wakes up several times during the night. I hear her cry, but mommy gets up and goes over. There's many nights where sheets are being changed of sick babies. Medicine is being taken. Stress over sleeping habits. Stress is the trick over what to eat. Stress over wanting things to go. It's a complete reorganizing of life. That's motherhood. So moms, thank you for reordering your life because of the gift that God has given you. Most recently, Sister Susan, we went home. I may have shared it was a year since my brother had passed away. So my sister contacts me all of a sudden and said, we're going home to be with mom that day. Can you get off work? We were crazy getting everything together. She went along and reorganized her whole life and had a wonderful meal, had everything planned out for and perfect sister Dietrich for a little bit of time to get us home and all be there. Mom still reorganized their life. Thank God for mothers and moms. And so I want to very quickly this morning, I want to look, and if I can do a little play on words of mom, M-O-M. I want to look at it from the Word of God and some things that we can gain this morning as we look at that. The very first thing that I want to say that moms is this. She is maker of memories. Maker of memories. How many of you remember some of your very first Christmases? Amen. How many of you remember meals that were planned? How many of you remember, Sister Terry, I remember getting my mom getting up with me in the middle of the night and, and taking care of me when I was sick. I'd have these crazy dreams. I'm still afraid of bats. Still afraid of bats. But I would have these crazy dreams that there was a bat in my room as a child. And Sister Dietrich, I would be young for my mom and dad. My dad would come, but my mom consistently would come, look all around, there was no bat in the room. And, and so, you know, all those crazy things that you remember of making memories, crafts that are done, meals that are made and prepared, favorite meals, birthdays, holidays. Sister Susan, you said about the holidays, but they are the making of memories. And so I want to tell you that Paul said this to Timothy. He said, Timothy, I want you to remember your mother, Eunice. In 1 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 1.5, the Word of God says, uh, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. How many of you are here today because of the faith that your mother had. She placed it in you. And Paul told young Timothy, he said, Timothy, I want you to remember the faith that's been placed in you by your mother, by your grandmother. Amen. You may remember uh, the way to salvation because mom put up signposts. Amen. There were guideposts to help you find your way to God. Robert Ingersoll uh, was a speaker at a college, and he would go around and he would talk at colleges, and his number one goal was that he lectured about the doubts of faith and religion in God. And so two young men were there in that class, and Sister Sandy, they listened to Robert Ingersoll as he lectured about doubting faith and the reality of God. And those two boys uh, listened, and the one boy after class, he said to the others, he said, it all makes sense to me. I understand what Robert Ingersoll said. And his friend looked back at him and said, he said, it doesn't make sense to me because he cannot explain what I have witnessed and seen in my mom all of her life. Wow. Greater than anything is the memories that you are placing in your children's life and memories for God. So I'm to share. How many of you wish that you would have one more day, one more hour, one more afternoon to sit down and go for the family hall? How many of you wish that you could sit down and hear the stories of yesteryear from mom? Some of you may remember those stories, the making of who they are and the making of who you are through memories. But mom, I will tell you, your relationship with God will be the greatest matter that you can achieve. Amen? The greatest thing that you can give your children is a relationship with God. Allow me to reflect for a moment. 
I was 17 when my dad died. I really didn't know what I was feeling. I was overwhelmed. I never faced that before, really. They weren't so close to me. I was overwhelmed. But let me tell you, when I look back over this, I see a mom who modeled Jesus Christ through that. I see that when I was going to go to Bible school, uh, Sister Rachel, I was going to put off. I said I'll go the next semester. I was the only one at home with a driver's license. Her, she didn't have a driver's license. My sister didn't have a driver's license. It was very overwhelming and scary to me. I said, Mom, I'll stay home and I'll go the next semester. I remember sitting on my bed and my mom said, Bobby, just because situations have changed, the will of God has not changed. And I think it's best for you to go. You think that was easy for my mom to say to me, go? No, she would love to have all those securities of, of having things at home. But yet, she reflected and modeled Jesus Christ. Those are the memories that are given. Model Jesus Christ. Mom. Most recently I watched, I can't imagine going to a funeral of your own child, but I watched her model confidence and trust in Jesus Christ. And I'll never forget that because she, as a mom, was a maker of memories. I've seen her pray. I've seen her dance in the spirit. I've watched her speak in tongues. I've watched God work and move through her. She was a maker of memories. But it is, I can't help but this morning reflect of your mom, so quiet, but yet so sensitive to the spirit of God in her life. Makers of memories. Moms, you are making memories for your children, but the greatest memory you can make is modeling the love of Jesus Christ for them. And you may say, well, I didn't find Jesus until I was older. I don't have those early years. You are still making memories with your children. Make memories that are godly memories. Memories that exhibit trust and faith and confidence in God. No matter what. Because God is good, Sister Rachel. And God is faithful. And God does love me. Making memories. See... Moms love their children unconditionally. Do you remember Solomon, the wisest man in the Bible? He asked, he could have asked for anything. He was, even though he was young, he was smart. He asked for wisdom. And, and God gave him wisdom. Do you remember there were two mothers? Two mothers, one baby died. Maybe she rolled over on it, smothered it, and so she was playing tricks with the living baby. She would go exchange her baby for the living baby. And so King Solomon got involved. And he said, well, we'll divide the baby in half. The first mom said, no, 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 let her have it. Second mom said, okay. King Solomon said, a real mother, even though it's difficult, will give to her children. Mom, even when it's difficult, love. Even when it's difficult, pray. Oh, stand by, be faithful to God. Amen, mom, the maker of memories. The second thing I want to look at is this. Is mom the mender of misfortunes? I wonder if I ask you here, how many of you moms here have ever kissed a boo-boo? Oh. <laughs> from a, from, a, from a, 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 a cut finger to a sweater to a broken leg to a broken arm, the kiss of mom, let me tell you, she is the mender of misfortunes. And so I, I need to tell you that she's the spinner of childhood dreams and, and she's the mender of misfortunes. She's the advocate for the black sheep of the family. She's the encourager of the one that, that needs encouragement. Oh, moms, you are the mender, amen, of misfortunes. The story is told to a man, true story. And he and his family were taken into a, 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 a concentration camp. And uh, he, he went with his parents, he went with his wife, he went with his son and his younger son. He knew that those who could not work because of their health, their age, would be put to death. And so here it was, he came in from working every day and he would look for his parents, he would look for his wife, and he looked for his children. And one day he came in and he noticed that his wife and his children were gone and he couldn't find them. And all of a sudden he noticed his son Joshua. And he went over and he said, Joshua, where is mommy and baby brother? He said, oh daddy, they knew that baby brother was weak and 
could not work, so they went to take him away. Mommy saw him crying, and Mommy said that he was so upset. So Mommy said to him, she said, son, I'll hold your hand. To the plight of her very own death. She was a victim of misfortune. Mom, never give up on prayer. Never give up. Never give in. Never give out. You're the man of misfortune. Love and gives victories in the lives of your children. You remember the woman that her daughter was so grievously vexed, but she would not give up praying until she seen God work and move. Listen, if you have a child that's wayward, if you have a child that, that is struggling, don't ever give up Pray. God hears and God gives victory. God gives answers. Amen. God heals bodies. God heals hearts. God heals dreams. Mom, you are the mender of misfortune. The third thing that I want to look at is this. Is that moms are the mover of mountains. Moms are the mover of mountains. Here it was. That this mother had her child that was so struggling. But Sister Susan, she went to Jesus. Have mercy on me. Oh, so even my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Everyone else says, send her away. But she cried out to Jesus. And God met the need of her daughter. God uses moms to be nice. Moms are the maker of memories. Moms are the menders of misfortunes. But moms are the movers of mountains. Amen. That God can restore. Amen. That God can revive. That God can do things in your children's <laughs> life. Amen. I'm so grateful. Uh, uh, I, my, my, my sister's been having some problems with her belly. And so my mom, she's, she's been concerned. Every day when I talk to her, I, I'm praying for her. Don't forget to pray for Barbara. Pray for her belly. Uh, you know, she's concerned. She's moving that mountain. And uh, she'll ask about Brimley's eye. How's Brimley's eye doing? I'm praying for her all day long. I pray for my children and grandchildren. You know what? Because moms are the movers of mountains. I believe that the way that <coughs> dreams are fulfilled in the lives of young people is because moms move mountains for them. Moms move mountains. Sister Holly would come to the camera this morning trying to be cautious of time on it's Mother's Day. One thing that I realize, at least right now, in this, in this toddler stage, that it's exhausting to go to work. But as I said earlier, I've had lots of people say, boy, you never stop worrying about your children. <coughs> Do we have any, any parents of grown children? Uh, You're still concerned for them and pray <coughs> for them. And you want to see them do well and succeed their families. And so it can be emotionally and spiritually exhausting. But Mom, I want to tell you that when God created you, he created you for a specific purpose. I wonder what God was thinking when He created woman. I've got to make her sensitive enough to my spirit. But I've got to make her strong enough to mend scratched knees and broken bones. I've got to make her strong and wise enough to be able to impart wisdom to see callings and dreams fulfilled. God did a great job when He made moms. In my opinion, 
girls the next thing to angelic beings because what they do is phenomenal. And though it can be exhausting and tiring and you give and you give and you give, I want to tell you that there comes a time where you just need to be filled up. If we can do anything this morning in the service, ladies, I want to invite you in just a few moments to gather in. Then I want to invite your families to come and stand behind you. And I want God just to touch you. Sister Holly's going to talk about just needing to fall in love with Jesus afresh and anew. Amen. My very first memories of Jesus, Brother Rick, came from my mom praying with me every night. My sister and I, my brother and I at the bedside. Amen. She taught us about Jesus. At the end of a long, exhausting day, but Craig, she still poured God into us. Moms, you still got to pour God in. Even if your son or daughter is wayward, amen, you still need to have enough to pour God in. Amen, there's grandchildren that are looking at you. The only way you can model Jesus Christ is as Jesus Christ, amen, is filled up in you. So this morning, would you allow Jesus just to fill you up? Sister Holly, you can go ahead and start singing. If there's drum playing, just ignore it.